Newton Thomas Siegel, you've worked with Spike Lee on several commercials, uh, but The Five Bloods is your first film together uh, as a cinematographer. So how did this finally come about? Uh, Spike called me and uh, I said, yes. Uh, uh, I've known Spike for a long time. Um, uh, since early days in New York and, you know, as I think most of America, you know, just admired him as a filmmaker. And uh, over the years, you know, we crossed paths, we worked together on commercials, and that's all great. But of course, you know, the real dream was to uh, to do a movie together. Um, I, I was actually at the time he called me, I was just home in LA for a few days on a um, uh, a break in a movie that I was doing in India and, and Thailand. Uh, and he, told me about Five Bloods and he sent me the script and I was all very excited, but I, when he told me the dates, I was like, Spike, there's no way I, I'm still doing a movie. And literally, um, I would have had to, uh, his start, prep start date was before I was even done. So initially I was very hesitant, but you know, he was very confident and he said, you know, you're a, in his, the word he used was, you're a veteran and, um, you know, you and I can do this. So, uh, I drank the Kool-Aid and uh, uh, I'm very glad I did. <laughs> well, you, uh, you did uh, start your career as a documentarian in war zones. So, and this, it was this sort of like full circle for you working on a narrative war feature? Well, I think the, you know, the material is, is something that um, is very close to me and, and um, you know, was, uh, you know, a time period and a period of history that, I grew up with, and so first of all, to be able to do anything about that subject matter was was really attractive. And then, uh, you know, I I did do a lot of um, sort of war zone documentaries in my early days, and so I think um, to be able to relive that in a slightly safer venue <laughs> where the bullets weren't real was nice. Uh, and I tr tried to bring some uh, of that experience and technique, um, you know, into into Spike's movies as, as best I could. Mm -hmm. What was it your idea to do the sixty millimeters? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we talked about how to do the flashbacks and how to give them a, uh, their own sort of voice, so to speak, and. Um, uh, I uh, it seemed to me that why not do it the way I would have done it, you know, if I was doing it in 1970, uh, and that would have been on film, it would have been 16 millimeter, it would have been versatile film, most likely the, like a video news film or something like that. So um, uh, I, I proposed it, and um, you know, I think what really resonated for Spike was the verisimilitude of it that 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 is the way it would be done. So um, we made the decision to shoot in 16 and I was able to get Kodak to make some reversal film for me. It's a, it, it, it's kind of a hard, um, hard thing to come by these days. Uh, uh, and then the trickiest part was, you know, finding a lab that could process it um, uh, and being able to get it, uh, you know, from Thailand and Vietnam back to, back to the U.S. and turned around in time. Um, as it turned out, we only had Chadwick uh, Bozeman for two weeks. Uh, so um, we ended up shooting his material, sending it off, and really not even getting it back until he was done. Uh, there was a, a long turnaround time. The lab that was doing it back in uh, the States, um, Spectra is a, is, is a small as you can imagine a boutique operation so they don't, don't exactly run 24 7 and um uh, we just had to do a leap of faith but you know having spent my entire life shooting film and i felt fairly confident about about my end of it um mm -hmm. and it was just a question of what was going to hap happen as it as the film made its way across the globe into the you know into into the hands of this small lab yeah. Did you get any pushback about using 16? Um, not so much pushback as, you know, there was a lot of concern from uh, production about, about 
uh, cost, uh, the logistics, um, that kind of stuff. Um, but I think Spike's, um, you know, belief in it and belief in the, um, you know, what it meant to be able to, to really do it the way, the way those newsreels would have been shot, um, you know, was very persuasive. And consequently, um, you know, once the decision was made, Netflix was, you know, was, was very supportive. Obviously, they would have probably preferred that we shot it digitally, tried to figure out some, you know, <laughs> post-production technique. But, you know, at the end of the day, I, I think um, if you can do it in camera and put it into your, into your negative, whether it's digital or analog, um, why not? Like, why, why not do it that way? Uh, well, you use uh, multiple formats and aspect ratios, and the contrast is so striking between the scenes because the present day Vietnam in the beginning, it's like vibrant and sleek, and then but it gets like moodier and wider when they're in the jungle, and obviously the flashbacks look completely different. So, what was the prep like for this undertaking? Well, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we had a very um, short prep time, much shorter than I would have preferred for a film of this scale. Um, so, you know, to a certain degree, it was, you know, flying by the seat of your pants and, and just on, you know, the experience that I've had making movies all my life and, and Spike himself. Um, but the, um, you know, we, we, we had to kind of draw on our own, on our own learned and shared experience. Uh, and shooting film, you know, I'm very comfortable with it. It's, 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 I've done a lot more of that, that than shoot digital. So um, I wasn't so much worried about the, 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 um, the shooting of it. Um, uh, but it, it was uh, a very intense prep period for sure. Uh, Spike likes to work very quickly. He's a very decisive filmmaker. He's collaborative, but he, once he's made up his mind, you you move on. You don't second guess anything. You don't, um, you know, revisit decisions. You, 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 you discuss a, 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 a technique or a, or a plan and you execute, you know, the aspect ratio, you know, the, the four by three of the newsreel footage really was what kickstarted the whole idea of using the aspect ratio as a, as a, as a, um, uh, you know, a part of the aesthetic of the of the movie as a whole. Um, those those movies um, uh, that, that material, uh, if it had been shot um, in 1970, uh, it would have been shot with the intent of being shown on television. It would have been on the news. Um, Vietnam was the first war that was really televised. You know, that was that was you know brought straight from the battlefield to the uh, to the living room of America and the world, really. So um, we felt that in the same way we were going to the trouble of shooting uh, 16 millimeter film, we should stick with the aspect ratio. And so we did that all in uh, four by three. And um, that sort of opened the door to um, not taking the aspect ratio in any other part of the movie for granted, but really thinking about what um, what the the aspect ratio was saying. So, in our story, when they first arrive in Vietnam, uh, the the Bloods are experiencing a, a once familiar place in a whole new way. Uh, you know, Vietnam has become a, a, a fastly developing country. Um, uh, uh, Ho Chi Minh City, which used to be Saigon, is now a hustling and bustling, uh, very crowded and, and energized urban environment. So we um, started the movie in a, in a kind of very cinematic, modern, you know, uh, 2 4 um, uh, aspect ratio. Uh, and we saved the, um, the transition to the jungle when they finally, they set up all of their preparations and they make their journey into the jungle. We went to 185. And what's interesting about this, even though the film was meant to have a theatrical release, in, 
in the in the in the Netflix world who who supported the film, the delivery system is going to be uh, televisions, uh, iPads. That's the way that people are going to see it. So, unlike in a in a cinema, in a in a in a physical theater where you might see a a, a one eight five movie or or the screen is set up that way, and then you know the lights dim and the sides of the movie open up and you go, wow, look, we're expanding into this world of 2.0. In the um, uh, delivery system of a, of, a, of a television or iPad or something like that, you're if you're going from 2.4.0 to 185 and you make the decision to go this way, you're actually expanding, you're opening up the, the frame. And we did that with the intent of really expressing what it was like for these guys to go from this new experience of Ho Chi Minh City today into a reliving of the environment that they had experienced when they were in the jungle fighting uh, in, in the war. And so we wanted the, the jungle to sort of envelop them, to, to surround them, to expand. Um, and that's what drove that decision to go to the 185, which stayed that way then until the flashbacks and the material closed back in. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you also do Spike's trademark dolly shot at the end. Uh, so what was that like? Well, you have to. You know that's coming. Uh, <laughs> right and, up uh, yeah, yeah, sooner or later it's going to happen. So, um, uh, yeah, we did it. Um, the challenge there was that we were doing that in a practical location. It was a tiny apartment. So to do that shot effectively, you know, you need to put the actors on the dolly. You need to be able to move the dolly and the actors at the same time. And we're trying to do that. You know, if you look at his other movies, it's usually done like in the street or, you know, somewhere in a, in a larger environment. And here we are trying to do it in a, in a, uh, uh, an apartment that's, you know, not much bigger than the one I'm sitting in right now. So um, that was the challenge really. Um, uh, you know, we had, uh, you know, we had a great actor and, uh, um, the the execution of it wasn't you know, you know it was fairly straightforward, but the challenge really was doing it in that environment. Hmm. Made it challenging for you, so <laughs> a little, little bit, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you so much for your time. It was great speaking with you, uh, and You're we'll welcome. see you back for the group panel.